And uh, we're heading to Dubbo to talk to the newly re-elected Mayor of Dubbo Regional Council, Matthew Dickerson. How are you? Yeah, good thing, Troy. It does sound a little bit like Back to the Future, doesn't it? It certainly does, but it's uh, pretty much a, a different council that uh, you're taking on. You're uh, now uh, Dubbo and Wellington, and it's uh, uh, the way of the future. I think you're right. There certainly is a lot of difference compared to the old days when I was last mayor. There was a lot of experience on council. This new council has got a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of keenness, not a lot of experience on there. There's only one council that's been returned from the last council and there's only two councillors that have got any previous council experience at all. So there's eight newbies on there, but I've sat with all of the councillors and we've talked about some of their skills and some of the talents that they bring to the table and just some of their desires for the future. And I think there's a huge amount of enthusiasm there and I'm pretty excited to be involved with this new group. So uh, we want to focus on the future, but uh, what you've just said there, there must have been a bit of uh, people not very happy with the past. I think you're right there. There was only one councillor returned from the last council, so that is fairly unusual in all the time that I've been around local government. I can't remember any example before where only one councillor has been returned to a returning council. So there certainly was a desire for from the community to see a, a new approach to things, and you know, I don't want to reflect on the past, but obviously you've got to look at the past and say, well, where were they getting it wrong and how can we get it? right in the future and I think one of the key things one of the key messages that I took out of all of that process was that we need to make sure that we communicate with the community better people in the community don't have to necessarily agree with every decision of council it's very difficult for them to agree with everything that happens but what they do need to do is actually understand why decisions are being made need to be informed about things and so that's a real priority for myself and the new councillors is to really focus on that communication with the public make sure a very open and transparent approach is taken so people at least understand what is happening communication is key in any organization any level of government yeah, I think you're right. And talking to someone from a radio station, obviously, you'd be a very big advocate of communication. But it is something, it's, it's a simple word to say, Rod, but it is something that you really need to get right. And I think that transparency, talking to people about unpleasant decisions or unpleasant outcomes or even things that are going to be maybe not great for the entire community, but things that are needed for the long-term future of the community, maybe some of those things that you really need to talk to people about, explain what is happening and being really transparent in that process. And that's something that I think I did very well before and the previous council that I was involved with back in 2016 and, and previous to that, I think we did that very well and that's something that I really want to bring back and make sure we are very open and transparent in those communications with the community. Dubbo has been seen as the capital of uh, the west of New South Wales for a mighty long time. Are you keen to continue with that? There's a couple of things there that I think are really important, Rod. One thing that has happened in the past has really been that disassociation of Dubbo from the region. And I've always seen there's this beautiful symbiotic relationship with Dubbo and the region. We need the region because we have so many people from the region that come to Dubbo and inject money into our economy. But the region also needs Dubbo because we've got so many services and, and goods and products that are needed by people in the region. So there is that beautiful two-way relationship there. And I think what we've seen happen over the last few years is that Dubbo has almost seen itself as a bit of an island. So I am keen to see things like OROC, whether you call it something different, it might be called a Western Regional Council Alliance or there might be another name for it, but to see the councils in the region be much closer, communicate much better. And then on the broader picture, we've got other things like regional capitals, New South Wales or Evo City, some of those other things where Dubbo again has seen itself as a bit of an island recently when all those external linkages are very important. So yes, Dubbo involved in the region much more, Dubbo involved in New South Wales much more, I think are really important aspects. You, prior to uh, the calling of the... Uh or the announcement of who's been elected to the Dubbo Regional Council, um, we, I suggested that maybe you would be putting your hand up as mayor, but you wanted to wait and see what the people there, the councillors, thought. You got the job. Uh, I got the job, and certainly that was important to me, not to just make any assumptions about the fact that because I've been a mayor before, because I've been on council before, I should have the job automatically. It was important to have those discussions with the councillors that were elected and to look at who was elected. It was no good saying, yes, I'll be mayor without knowing 
what the council makeup would be like. So that was a discussion I had with each individual person that was elected. I had a one-on-one discussion with all of those, and then we had some group discussions once we got together for the first time. And I think it was really based around that experience that I did have as a mayor, experience that I had on council. They were the important aspects because we do have so many new councillors most of those councillors were very keen to see someone with some experience step into the role and really just hit the ground running. We need to make some changes. We need to get things happening. Hit the ground running with someone that actually has been there and done it before, and that was where the councillors decided to go. That's for the first one year and nine months. We'll have another mayoral election in a year and nine months, and we'll sit back and I'll assess what I've been doing, and they'll assess what I've been doing and decide whether it's appropriate for me to continue past that or whether someone else will stand up from the councillor ranks. And uh, as you've mentioned, you'd like to see some sort of organisation with uh, the other councils in Western New South Wales. Um, That's going to have to just bring benefit if you're all communicating and on the one page or singing from the same hymn book or something like that. You're absolutely spot on. And the old OROC, the Irana region of councils, which doesn't exist anymore, but that I saw was a really good conduit for people to communicate around the region. And we used to see simple things come out of that. For example, we used to have large attenders that would go out. So electricity, for example, we would put out a tender for electricity and we would say there are 12 councils that need to purchase electricity and the volume of that electricity purchase was obviously larger. So it gave us some more bargaining power and we would go to the market and say we're going to buy electricity for 12 councils. We would do the same and maybe not all 12, but sometimes in clusters when we'd be going out to buy bitumen or various products that we would need for those councils. But the other part that was really important is we would share knowledge. So once every three months, we would come together for an OROC meeting and that meeting would have certain specific items on an agenda, for example, electricity tender, as I mentioned, but it also might just be Are you seeing some of this happening in your community? How can we better address that? What's the community feeling around three bins, for example, and how is the best way to address that? What's the best way to go forward? So it was a sharing of ideas as well as being very specific and very technical. The Lower Macquarie Water Utilities Alliance was another thing that came out of those groups getting together to try and deliver best practice in water delivery to those communities across the entire region. So things like that, People don't necessarily see the benefits of on a day-to-day basis, but they are definitely big picture benefits. So getting those councils back together again, getting those groups to communicate, and Dubbo is a very important part of that, making sure Dubbo is at the table, I think that's critical for the region. Yep, definitely. Well, I wish you the best uh, being Mayor of the Dubbo Regional Council and to all the the councillors there as well, and uh, may it be a a good and long, prosperous uh, uh, session for the councils. I'm doing my very best to make sure that happens and I'm buoyed by the enthusiasm in the group of councillors we have. So hopefully we'll deliver some fantastic results for Dubbo and Wellington but also for the entire region. Thank you for your time today. Thank you.